So in this video, I want to talk about the 10 big mistakes people make when buying used gaming PCs on places like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, what have you. I'm making this video because I had a few comments and uh, talks with some of my friends about how a lot of my recent videos seemed like I had negative experiences. Uh, I wanted to say that that's actually not always the case. I usually have 95% really good experiences and I'm buying volume of stuff. So I, I post a lot of the videos that kind of have that negative situation as almost a clickbait type thing because they're more interesting when like you have a broken motherboard you're trying to fix or troubleshoot. I get plenty of good parts. I actually just got a 2070 Super the other day for $100. I tend to believe that most people have good intentions. So for this video, I have a list of 10 things that I try to always do myself. Sometimes I mess up and skip a step. There's obviously gonna be other things that I missed on this list. You guys can write down in the comments things that you do, like safe practices for buying used on the marketplace. Um, so let's go over starting with number one, the CPU. There are a lot of different versions of i7s and a lot of different versions of Ryzen processors. For example, you would not want to buy this i7 versus this Ryzen 5 processor. You would be much better with this Ryzen 5 versus this i7, uh, unless you had all the parts for the board and you know you had to be stuck with that. But the point is, is that people will go out and type in things like i7 and pull up a Sandy Bridge processor or, or a system with a Sandy Bridge processor and they'll totally ignore the Core i3-12100F system that has like a decent CPU and GPU and it's like, that's one of the biggest traps. People people think that they're getting a good deal. You know, I'm gonna go out and buy this i7 gaming PC. It's like, well, that's a 2013 i7 gaming PC. <laughs> and people fall for that trap a lot of times. So just make sure if you're looking into buying a system that you ask the person who's selling it if they're just listing it as an i7 and i7 only, they don't give you anything more than maybe like the frequency that it runs at. Make sure you're asking them exactly what CPU it is and make sure you look up the generation of that CPU. The next one on the list is pretty important for me and it's actually the GPU slots, which slot your GPU is in. So say you're going to pick up a PC and you see that somebody is using the bottom slot on the motherboard, a lot of times that could indicate an issue with the motherboard. The top slot is typically the 16X slot that you want to put your GPU in to get the full bandwidth of the board and card together. And when you see somebody moving it down, it typically can indicate things like a bent pin, a uh, broken pin, bad CPU, bad RAM, bad memory. Um, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. And sometimes what happens is when people are uh, troubleshooting, they can't figure out why the board is not displaying an image on that top lane. They'll move it down and that's just an indication that the motherboard is most likely bad and I would stay clear of that unless you can have that person move the card up to the top slot and show you that it's running. So this next one's a little bit less important, but it's something that I really look for when I'm buying used PCs and that's the power supply. If I'm buying a used PC that has, let's say, an overkill power supply for the components that are paired with it, I'll definitely want to move that power supply out to sell in a different system, and I always ask for the cables. If you don't ask for the cables, a lot of times you'll end up with a modular power supply that has like half missing cables. And the other thing about that is to really make sure that they are 100% the correct cable, because if you put the wrong cable in one of those modular power supplies, let's say like Corsair with EVGA, you're going to fry your system. And you don't want to do that. I've seen it time and time again where people plug the wrong ones in and they wreck something like their hard drives. Um, there's actually a story on it that my dad sent to me just the other day uh, talking about how this guy wrecked a whole bunch of his hard drives off a or SSDs off of a EVGA power supply. So you don't want to run into stuff like that. Um, always ask for those spare components, those spare parts that people have when they're selling you the computer. This next one is pretty important for me, might not be too important for other people, but it's ARGB fans and the real versus fake fans. So people will post up ads of PCs that are for sale, and a lot of times they'll put them in a new case, and these budget cases come with fans that are actually static RGB. There's no spinning, there's no wave uh, motion, there's no changing of any colors at all. 
the fans LEDs that are inside and soldered to the board in the hub are actually just one color and one color only and they're all changing they're all different colors around the fan hub and it illuminates like an RGB static image and when you see somebody taking a picture of it you go oh wow that's nice that those RGB fans look good but when you actually get the PC or the case you're going to notice that they don't spin or change and uh, for me, it's a total downer for sales because you got to explain to people, yeah, it's kind of rainbow, but it doesn't actually change colors because most people don't leave unicorn on. Um, but yeah, so just keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, when you're buying cases, if you do buy a case, just really keep an eye out for that because they're everywhere. This next one might be fairly obvious to most of you, but for those that it isn't, Bent pins or bent pins on the CPU are a problem and it's something you really do gotta look out for. It's a little tough to look out for if you're buying a build that's already finished. Um, obviously if it's up and running and you can see the person using it or have them show you running a test in front of you, you'll, you'll most likely be fine. But if you're actually buying individual components, um, this has happened to me a few times just recently, uh, things like the motherboard pins or the pins on say a older Ryzen CPU, you really got to check those to make sure they're not damaged in any way because if they are, there's a good chance that something's going to be massively wrong with that CPU or that motherboard. So just keep an eye on those pins. Another thing that people make a mistake doing on the marketplace is listing storage size incorrectly. So an SSD is obviously the newer technology or an NVMe SSD. And then you have the older SSD and hard drives. I see a lot of people advertise something like two terabytes of storage or a terabyte of storage and people go to pick up those PCs and they find out that they're getting this whole bundle deal and it's really just a hard drive. So just make sure you're asking them to clarify if it's a hard drive or an SSD. Um, this seems like another simple thing that you should know, but a lot of people mislist things on ads. Um, I just had this happen with a coworker of mine who believed that she had a one terabyte SSD in her 2013 Mac. If you're buying more high-end computer parts, this one's actually pretty important. Keep an eye for colored stains or watermarks anywhere inside the computer case or on any of the components. This will indicate something like possibly a leak if it was water cooled. A lot of people who do water cooling will throw a block on there, have an issue, take the block off and put the original cooler back on. Uh, same goes for other components. Maybe they'll try to clean it up. So it was a leak or something, you know, I see it a lot where people will have old water cooling systems and there will be little red drops or blue drops in certain places, depending on the color of the liquid. And that's just an indication that either they spilt while building it, which would be the best version of events, or it did leak at some point and you never know if it ruined any of the components. This next one actually came from an ad I just saw the other day. It was a RTX 4080 paired with a 600 watt thermal take power supply. Now, it probably will work, but this 600 watt thermal take power supply really was like a 500 watt power supply. And the person selling it online just definitely was trying to get every dollar out of the system. And it was a total ripoff in the first place. But it just reminded me to always check to make sure your components are actually compatible. So I'm going to bundle the last two talking points together. Um, bad GPUs and false advertising. Bad GPUs. It's kind of tough because you have to see a GPU running. And even uh, just like the video the other day that I had, I had fixed a GTX 780, the Poseidon. I thought I had it running. And when I went to go test it, it failed anyways. Um, so it's a good practice to, if you're going to buy used parts, especially if they're in a computer that's already running, or if somebody has a test bench or some way of showing you the GPU running, um, to have them test it. There are plenty of free softwares like Heaven, Valley, Superposition, and they can just download those and show you the GPU running. Um, mining cards, cards that have been gaming every day, I don't know, from like a streamer or something like that. Those cards are gonna have a lot of wear and components do wear out over time. So you just wanna keep an eye on that. There's no 100% way to tell how long a GPU has been used, but you can kind of just eyeball it. And if it's really disgusting or you see corrosion or any issues with the plating on the cooler, you can kind of get an idea of the environment it was in and how long it's been used. Binding the other last part into this GPU section is that 
Sellers will often really misadvertise performance. They'll do something like run a game at 720p and then put medium settings and show Fortnite running at say 90 FPS on a really, really old, terrible card like a GT 1030 or a 710. And then they put those in that system. They show you the frame rate on the screen and you go, wow, that's actually not a bad deal. $200 for a computer that can do 90 FPS on Fortnite, but they're not actually telling you that it's at 720p with the render resolution on halfway. So that's another thing to look out for. I see that false advertising so much, especially on eBay. eBay is just littered with these really crappy PCs. Um, it's gotten a lot better over the years, but when the pandemic first hit, I can't tell you how many people I met that brought PCs to me that needed them to be fixed or upgraded. And they were running like an i3 from 10 years ago and a GT 710. It was bad, but we've moved past that time. Hopefully nobody gets too scammed with that stuff anymore. That's going to do it for this video. Stick around for other videos, sub to the channel, do all those good things, drop a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Always great PCs on the internet, guys. Check out this Facebook listing for a toilet PC. Uh, wonderful price of only $2,400.